thank you very much, uh, Professor Mick, uh, for uh, the kind introduction. And uh, I'm going to complete uh, um, the EASTADA guidelines management of high risk group. Uh, since 2016, guidelines and societies have been recommending the use of SGLT2 inhibitors and GLP-1 receptor agonists for their metabolic, cardiovascular, and kidney benefits. Before 2016, ESD ADA you, uh, was only concentrating on tight glycemic control. Later on, the European Society of Cardiology Canadian Diabetes, starting from 2016, started to state uh, cardiovascular and mortality benefits in patients with type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease is a main issue and target for uh, diabetes patients. Again, 2018, the American Diabetes Association was talking about benefits in atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease and chronic heart failure patients with type 2 diabetes. 2020, the American Diabetes Association, uh, independent of hemoglobin A1c, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease and chronic kidney disease, predominates in patients with type 2 diabetes and started to target those comorbidities and risk factors, and not only uh, glycemic uh, control. In uh, 2022, also again, uh, ESD and ADA guidelines said very important information about um, those high-risk patients, and we're going to uh, discuss them uh, shortly. This is the ADA EASD consensus 2022, just um, uh, introduced uh, last month. Um, this is the decision cycle for patient centered glycemic management, and we have many parameters for glycemic management and goals of care to prevent complications and to optimize the quality of life. And to assess key person uh, characteristics like issues, motivation, depression, and cognition, and some certain issues for certain patients like age, hemoglobin A1C, and weight. Uh, consider specific factors impacting the choice of treatment, like the presence of cardiovascular disease and chronic kidney disease. And to provide ongoing support and motivation of the patient because we have a good percentage of diabetic patients are having depression and sometimes in older age some cognitive disorders. Uh, we need to motivate these patients and to discuss problems like uh, sleep, um, uh, uh, presence of sleep disorders, presence of depression, presence of cognitive disorders, mood changes, and to review and agree on management by the patient. The patient should, should chair in the management plan and approve the management plan. According to ADA 2021, in Jan uh, 2021, these were the standards of medical care a multifactorial approach to reduce the risk of diabetes complications. All patients should receive lifestyle modification and diabetes education. And to reduce diabetes uh, complications, we should make good glycemic management, blood pressure management, lipid management, and to use agents with cardiovascular and kidney benefits when needed. This is AGA 2022, and again like AGA 2021, we usually start with lifestyle modification and metformin. And the, if the patient is having 
atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or high risk for atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or heart failure or uh, chronic kidney disease, then this patient is needing a medication to improve these complications or to prevent these complications. And usually the medication is either SGLT2 inhibitor or GLP-1 receptor agonist with proven efficacy on cardiovascular disease or chronic kidney disease. And if the patient is not having atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or risk of cardiovascular disease or heart failure or chronic kidney disease, then we should search for other parameters like the need for weight reduction, the presence of hypoglycemia, and to consider the cost of medications. Then AGA 2021, the first line of therapy was metformin plus lifestyle. Then we add a second agent. In 2022, the first line is not constantly metformin. The recommendations is to use SGLT2 inhibitors or GDP-1 receptor agonists with or without metformin based on glycemic needs. This is again a change in AGA ESCG uh, 2022. This is a consensus report by AGA and ESG uh, 18 August 2022 and released in September uh, 2022. And let me um, make it more clear later on. Uh, for patients with atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or at high risk for uh, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, we may not start with metformin, but we may start with SGLT2 inhibitors or GDP1 receptor agonist with proven efficacy on atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. For patients with heart failure, usually we use SGLT2 inhibitors with proven efficacy on heart failure. With patients with CKD, we have very good um, uh, report about the useful use of certain SGLT2 inhibitors in those patients to prevent progression of CKD. These are the medications for lowering glucose according to uh, ESD ADA 2022. 20, uh, uh, I'm sorry, it's a little bit small uh, letters. And it starts with metformin, which is uh, having um, potential benefit on uh, cardiovascular events. On heart failure, it is neutral. On progression of CKG, it is neutral. For SGLT2 inhibitors, it is having benefit on uh, uh, prevention and progression of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Those uh, drugs are canagliflozin and dapagliflozin. For uh, those um, uh, heart failure, all of them, all this group is having beneficial effect on heart failure. For CKD, again, canagliflozin, dapagliflozin, and impagliflozin are having benefit on progression of CKG. For GLP-1 receptor agonist, uh, we are having um, um, good evidence about the, evid uh, the benefit of GLP-1 receptor agonist on the progression and prevention of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, especially certain groups like dulaglutide, liraglutide, semaglutide, and the others are uh, neutral. On heart failure, they are neutral. And on progression of uh, CKG, again, there is evidence of the benefit of GLP-1 uh, receptor agonist on the progression of, um, of CKG. This is the SGLT2 inhibitors, like we said, those with evidence uh, and effect on maize, canagliflozin and impagliflozin, on heart failure, all of them, and on progression of diabetic kidney disease, canagliflozin, dapagliflozin, and impagliflozin. And for GLP-1 receptor agonists, all of them are having a 
high um, effect on weight reduction, and this is very beneficial. And for the effect on mace, dulaglutide, liraglutide, semaglutide, and those who are neutral include exenatide and lexenatide. And all, on heart failure, all of them are neutral, and on progression of diabetic kidney disease, dulaglutide, liraglutide, and semaglutide. Uh, this is again, um, we said this uh, patients with atherosclerotic card uh, cardiovascular disease or uh, those with high risk of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease and how to use the medication. And if the patient is uh, still not controlled on one medication, then we should add the other medication. If we are using SGLT2 inhibitor, we add GLP1 receptor agonist and vice versa. Uh, this is the choosing the glucose lowering medication in people with CKG, like we said, GLP-1 receptor agonist, SGLT2 inhibitor, and if the patient is still above target, we may consider adding another medication. Uh, patients with chronic kidney disease, diabetic chronic kidney disease, and I'm sure Professor Mick covered this issue, but uh, preferably SGLT2 inhibitor with primary evidence reducing CKG progression, and we use SGLT2 inhibitor with patients with uh, estimated GFR equal or more than 20 milli per minute. And once initiated, they should be continued until initiation of dialysis or uh, renal transplantation. Or we can use GLP-1 receptor agonist with proven cardiovascular benefit if the SGLT2 inhibitor is not tolerated or contraindicated. And if above target, we use vice versa medication. Um, this is the decision cycle for a person centered on glycemic management in type 2 diabetes, and these are the goals of care to prevent complication and to optimize the quality of life and to assess the key person characteristics, the age, the weight, the presence of hypoglycemia, and to uh, these are the components of care, many components and complicated figure actually, but let's um, discuss some important topics like we should target the cardiovascular risk factor, screening and surveillance, blood pressure lowering, lipid lowering, um, antithrombotic agents when needed, and smoking cessation. Um, and those, again, are the same medications we said, and in case of heart failure, we use SGLT2 inhibitor with proven benefits. And let me finish with the consensus recommendations. In patients with heart failure, CKG, established cardiovascular disease, or multiple risk factors for cardiovascular disease, a decision to, to use GLP-1 receptor agonist or SGLT2 inhibitor with proven evidence should be independent on, uh, of the use of metformin. Then we can use metformin or not. Um, to agree with this opinion or not, this needs discussion, detailed discussion, because uh, we were dependent on metformin as uh, the, the first um, uh, treatment or monotherapy and to add any medication on metformin. So this needs to be discussed. It's not just um, uh, guidelines to be followed without discussion. In people with heart failure, CKG established cardiovascular disease or multiple risk factors for cardiovascular disease, a decision of GLP-1 receptor agonist or SGLT2 inhibitor with a proven benefit uh, independent of the baseline hemoglobin A1C. Then we should target the risk without um, uh, looking to the baseline hemoglobin A1C. These are, again, the conclusion and recommendations in people with CKG. 
SGLT2 inhibitors and GLP-1 receptor agonists reduce the risk of MACE independent of estimated GFR. In patients with CKD, SGLT2 inhibitors reduce the risk of heart failure. This is very important and very evident. And kidney outcomes, including end-stage renal disease, and the guidelines said starting from estimated GFR of 20, we can use SGLT2 inhibitors. In people with CKG with GFR equal or more than 20 per minute, we can start SGLT2 inhibitors and the benefit should be initiated to reduce the risk of MACE, heart failure and kidney outcome and if such a treatment is not well tolerated by the patient or contraindicated, we may use GLP-1 uh, receptor agonists with prov proven evidence on cardiovascular outcomes, if the patient can tolerate the price. Thank you very much.